Hi, I'm Ellen at Black Film, where you can find more about Black Film news, exclusives, and reviews. On today's episode, I'm joined by guest host, Hakeem Graham. Hello, everyone. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. Thank you very much. Happy to have you. Happy to be here. I'm just going to dive in. Jump in. Because I'm excited. I'm, no, I'm excited. Have you seen the Candyman trailer, though? I've seen the Candyman trailer. I've seen the original movie in the 80s. Um, yes, I'm that old. And I think that this is going to be one of those fantastic films if you're one of those horror film buffs. Yeah. I mean, I was scared then as a kid, and I'm scared now as a grown woman. <laughs> that trailer had me spooked. Oh, yeah. It took me back to when I first watched it, and just the whole idea of the whole concept of this man with a hook, and you say his name in the mirror five times, and he appears, and you're dead is insane. So you're scared of the man with the hook, but not the fact that it's in Caprini Greens. Um, yes, it's a man with a hook that appears out of nowhere. How do you not be afraid of that? Oh, I'm afraid of that. I'm, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of the fact that I'm not going into the bathroom looking in the mirror saying anything. Well, outrageous. that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, so Jordan Peele is attached to this. No brainer. Producer. Yeah. Uh, producer of Black Klansman. Producer of um, Get Out. Yes. Which was a big success. Yes. I mean, I think we talked about this $4.5 million budget would gross $255 million. How much? That's insane. $255 million. Okay. That's the man. I'm not mad at that at all. Not at all. I love that a female director is attached to this. Nia uh, DaCosta. Black Girls Maggot. I, yeah, I love that um, when Rosenfeld, who's the president of Jordan Peele's uh, production, Monkey Paw Monkey Productions, Paw Productions, is a part of this as a screenwriter. And I love the premise of 28 years later, in a now gentrified section of Chicago, uh, in Cabrini Green Projects. Real uh, life. Right, real life, right. <laughs> and it's now this urban legend that's back on the scene, crispy and clean, and terrorizing folks all over again. Yeah, and I like the way they developed that story, yeah. right? So he's an artist trying to find himself um, after going to a little slump. Yeah. So to find himself, he does this deep dive into the history of Cabrini Greens and what goes on, and he goes and finds this story. And it's interesting for him to relive it and then uh, do his thing and find his place in the history, yeah. which turns the story into something totally different, which I think makes it a lot scarier. I agree. I also like the connection between the main actor, who's um, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, yes. who's been in Watchmen, Watchmen. Aquaman, Aquaman. Uh, what else Favorite. did he do? I think The Get Down. Um, so he is a visual artist, yes. and the connection to the Candyman is that he was also an artist, an artist that yes. was well known for his portraits. Right. And the whole backstory of who Candyman is has always fascinated me, just because, like, how did he get the hook? Like, what happened to Candyman? He, like I said, was a, a famous uh, portrait artist, and he painted, um, well, he fell in love with a woman and fathered a child with her, a white, white woman. woman. And this is what, the 19th century, when, of course, that was taboo. Which is ironic, since it's a yeah. gentrified neighborhood, isn't it? Right, right, another connection, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, the woman's father hired a lynch mob, they cut off his right hand, smeared him with honey from a bee yard, yeah. which of course attracted all these hungry bees, stung him to death. I mean, it's, it's, a gruesome, it's a gruesome and very sad story. Right. And so how he came to haunt Cabrini Greens is because his body was burned and his ashes were spread. Spread around. Right. Yeah. And that's sad in a sense, but makes a compelling story. Absolutely. It, it, it gives you a lot of meat yeah. to, to your, your horror movie. Yeah. I mean, because rarely do you see horror movies with storyline, with a, with a history. This yeah. gives you a history, and now they're bringing it back and giving it more history. I think you're going to have a lot of people bringing their little Aunt Mays to this movie theater, and she's going to be screaming through the whole movie, right. trying to tell everybody, watch out, girl, he going to come in. No. Right. I mean, this is the, the typical thing. And the fact that it's, uh, it welcomes the demographic of old and young to go Absolutely. see this, for the people that were around when it first came out, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's awesome. I also appreciate the fact that it's relatable because of the history, uh, because of the visual artists and the connection of you know, Candyman's artistry. And so I will be at the theater on uh, June 12th, because that's 12th. when it comes out, watching Candyman. I'll be Candyman. there too. Yeah, definitely. Um, June 12th uh, is going to be one of those dates, bring everybody out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a Jordan Peele, so Jordan Peele. Let's support Jordan Peele. Let's just because he's doing the darn thing. Yeah, he's out there, and everybody should know this. Speaking of another person's out there, uh, Queen Latifah. Yeah. In a remake, 
and I, and I know you, you, you watch this, Equalizer. Right. Um, 80s classic. What can I say? Uh, Denzel brought it back twice. It was so nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they bring a little spin to it where, you know, Robin McCall, which was Robert McCall in the 80s, um, and Lorraine Toussaint plays her aunt, which is a really different context to Robert McCall, who was a loner. Mm -hmm. You know, he did his job alone, and it was, it, it kind of makes sense, right? If you're going to be in that sort of job, you don't want to have ties. Right. You got to be a loner. You got to be a loner. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be interested in how they tie this in and how they work this story because she has kids. She has an aunt. Queen Latifah's Queen character. Queen Latifah's character okay. has its aunt. Robin McCall has an aunt and kids. And I'm thinking to myself, as a mother, how do you do this sort of job right. and have kids and ties, period? Yeah. Well, she, she plays this mysterious type of figure who helps people with nowhere else to go. But see, that's my thing. Is it mysterious because she has kids? I mean, it's mysterious because where does this energy come from? Like, why do you have the power and, and, and the, the means to help people with nowhere else to go? Like, so whether they'll, ex I mean, th th that was the same with um, Denzel's character in Equalizer. Like, he just had this mystery to him. We really didn't know too much about him, but we knew enough. So I, I imagine that same sort of energy is going to be transferred to um, Queen Latifah's character. Um, and also Toussaint, uh, Lorraine Toussaint, who I'm a huge fan of. Yes. Um, she kind of plays this oracle type of character, wise and yes. truth teller type of saying. type yeah. of character. So I think they picked the I right person it. to play that role because she brings this very, you know, bold and you know, all knowing presence on screen. So I think they picked they picked really well when they picked Lorraine Toussaint. Yeah, and they picked well when they qu yeah. picked Queen Latifah. Yeah. Dana Owens. Absolutely. I mean, she comes from the neighborhood I come from, Ill Town, East Orange, Newark, New Jersey. Um, I can't be prouder than anybody else. Jersey I mean, is definitely in the house because I'm from stand Jersey up. too. <laughs> stand up. Definitely. Um, so that, that brings another element. I'm definitely going to watch this. I'm definitely going to be in the house uh, supporting her, supporting Lorraine. Um, my curiosity, though, grows as how they're going to tie that story, how yeah. they're going to make it relevant for her to be in that sort of business. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned before, um, Denzel Washington had a military background, so you can kind of tie that into his That's loneliness. Right. That's right. Um, his wife was killed and, you know, or yeah. died. And you can kind of understand her, his you pain. You can connect, yeah. You can yeah. understand his pain. So I'm gonna be interested in how they're gonna connect the pain for, for Queen Latifah. Mm. You know, how do you become that sort of character and, and have a family and still do that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing what that ends up being. I, I would have loved to be um, a fly on the wall in the planning meeting when they when they decided they were going to reboot the series, and then they decided that oh, let's get Queen Latifah to do this. Like of all people, <laughs> Queen Latifah was such a boss pick. Boss. Right. The fact that it's a Straight black woman boss. that's Strong playing this woman. role, like they could have picked a man. But well, she multi she's multi talented. No doubt. But they could have picked a man very easily. So whoever's decision it was to pick Queen Latifah to play this role, hats off to you, sir or ma'am. And I would love to be a fly on the wall for the script reading, that yeah. first one. Uh, I, mm. I would dig that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So uh, High Note is coming out. We chatted a little bit about High Note, so I'm kind of interested in how this conversation is going to play out. <laughs> Because I don't know that we see eye to eye on it, which is awesome. So High Note is a new movie that's just out, that's coming out May 8th with um, starring Tracy Ellis Ross, Dakota Johnson, and Ice Cube. Cube. And I watched the trailer. So did I. Okay, so before I even jump into the trailer, <laughs> um, I, I'm not generally a fan of music industry movies just because they, they, they tend to have this cheesiness and see? inauthenticity to them. But then I watched the trailer. So, a couple of and things. And what changed your mind? Cause you <laughs> okay. Well, what changed my mind is who's starring in it. Tracy Ellis Ross and Ice Cube. Uh, I'm low-key excited to see them both on screen. And then I'm also a fan of Dakota Johnson. What, <laughs> right. But what, what I don't know is, is this movie about Dakota Johnson, the personal assistant, or is it about Tracy Ellis Ross, the superstar with the huge ego? And see, that's what I got. I thought, from my perspective, I got it, it was about Dakota. Dakota Jones. Okay. And aside from having very famous parent, parents, uh, Don Johnson and Melanie Griffin, I don't see the connection. I mean, because I think with those two parents, you're going to find a script. You're going to trip over a script. 
Okay. Um, okay. Ice Cube in this, and I like Ice Cube. I love Ice Cube. I like his grind. I love the fact that he's a Muslim, and nobody low key knew that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a devout, low key. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So, and then Tracy Ellis Ross. Well, I'm gonna be fair and honest, and I'm probably gonna get killed for this later. Mm, but she say is it. fine, boy. Let me tell you something. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, it, and, and she's also a great actress. I like her in Blackish. I like her in a lot of things she's done. Remember Girlfriend? Of course, yeah. I liked her in that. That's right. when I first was enamored. So are um, you saying that you're not excited about her being in this? I think that you touched on something that was very important. Dakota Johnson is not the story. If, if, if Tracy is going to be up front and she's going to be singing, she's going to showcase her talent, her mother's Diana Ross. Yes. And I think this role is, in my opinion, not her best look. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because... I'm not a fan of movies like this, like the, the musicals, and I think even if it was a musical, it shouldn't be her. Oh, I think musical is a rough word for this. No, I'm not she, She's musical. just starring I mean, in a movie and she's a, a musician, right? And she also sings, like she's, those are her vocals. So right. there is some interest there for Tracy with singing. So to me, it makes sense that she would be in this role, right? Well, yeah. Authentic, authenticity, though? Um, that remains to be seen, yeah. I think. That okay. remains to be seen. Okay, okay. Right. Especially, you know, if they deliver that arc um, that, that was described in the, in the article. Like, you know, there's this thing that happens that kind of propels them, both of them, Dakota Johnson and Tracy Ellis Ross' character, into a different place. So I think that will be the telling factor of whether this will be cheesy and inauthentic, or will it be, like, a heartfelt movie. Now, we haven't mentioned really Cube's role role in yeah. this and, or his positioning. Yeah. And I think I like his positioning and I like his role. I just think that I think he's playing it like himself too much. I think he's playing it like okay. he's doing barbershop. Okay. And I'm like, no Cube, you're supposed to be slick. Right. Don't play it as, because for me, I'm thinking he's going to bust out in like NWA style at some point and be like, no, my artist is doing this. I get that. As opposed to saying, that. being the smooth guy, saying, working out the deals yeah. and trying to smooth it out between Dakota and Tracy Got to it. make that, that transition. I agree with you there. Um, and he plays Tracy Ellis Ross's manager. So, yeah, you would think that someone in that role kind of has to be sleek with it and not too, like, like you said, it's about to bust out an NWA um, lyric. So, yeah, I, I, I might agree with you there. And, and lastly, I love the, the movie poster. It's so retro. Yes. Um, it's, it, she is channeling her mother Ooh, in, in that movie is. poster. Like, that's what got me, the poster, she is. to begin with. She definitely is. Yeah. And that silhouette, that dress, um, I'm digging it. Yeah. I'm really digging it. I'm, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it just because of it, it is what it is. I'm going to see it. <laughs> it is what it is. Because I, I'm, I'm skeptical. Okay. And then we can, you know, get back together and, we and can talk wrap about that it. Up. Yeah. yeah. We can wrap that up. <laughs> <laughs> this should be interesting. Okay. Octavia Butler's Dawn novel is being adapted into a sci-fi series with uh, Ava DuVernay and Victoria Mahoney. Um, I think, I like sci-fis, obviously. I think this is going to be a great adaptation because Octavia Butler is so colorful in her writing. Mm. Um, she's, she's, she's very vigilant in giving you the story right up front. Yeah. Um, the character wakes up 250 years later after the nuclear holocaust and she's uh, surrounded by aliens and she's kind of, you know, disoriented. Um, I find this interesting. I find this intriguing and also find it comforting because Normally when we see sci-fi movies, we don't see a lot of black faces. We sure don't. We see a lot of other faces, but this is a comforting uh, novel and adaptation because we're going to see a lot more of us. And we're going to see that story. Um, I think it's a hot thing because it's also told from a female's perspective. I agree. I agree. And the fact that it's an African-American woman that's tasked with um, re resurfacing the human race. I don't know that I've ever seen a plot or a storyline that includes an African American woman saving the human race. Well, kinda, I'm here for that. Yeah. I'm here for that. That kind of coincides with, you know, the first uh, bones found in Africa was an African woman. Exactly. Um, so it's kind of reliving that sort of thing or retelling that story. Yeah. But Octavia Butler does a colorful adaptation in the book. 
and I'm interested mm. in seeing how they're going to do the TV series yeah. because this book is fairly long, but it's filled with a bunch of stories and a bunch of avenues you can go down. Now, I will say this, there's a touch of sexual content in it, and it's going to be interesting on how they take on that, especially if it's going to be a TV series, whether it's going to go to streaming or it's going to mm. go to um, actual network TV. Yeah. And who's going to pick it up? And that's going to be interesting. I'm kind of hoping that maybe we get somebody like maybe Oprah, maybe okay. a Jordan Peele and another production co, co and co-produce and pick that up on a network station or maybe even CBS or something like that. I could also see that in um, Netflix. Definitely Netflix or so Hulu. And it's distributed by Ava DuVernay's um, uh, company. Array Filmworks, right. 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 So right. what I didn't know about Victoria Mahoney, who, like you said, was tapped to adapt this into a film or TV series, um, is that she, I, I've seen her in front of the screen once or twice back in the day. Mm -hmm. I think she was in Legally Blonde and Seinfeld. She Seifel, was Legally Blonde But I Seinfeld. did not know that she had such a massive presence behind the screen. She's directed some of my favorite shows, like Seven Seconds on Netflix. Seven Seconds. You yes. on Netflix, which yes. is really hot right now. And also she's, um, she has a show coming up on HBO, a series coming up on HBO called Lovecraft Country. I think okay. we talked about this earlier. We talked about it. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, being done by J.J. Abrams and, of course, Jordan Peele. So Jordan that's going to be Peele. an interesting duo. J.J. Abrams and Jordan Peele, I am here for that that's collaboration. That's Mr. Hotness. That's yeah, Mr. Hotness. Definitely. And, and Octav Octavia Butler, like she won the Genius Grant Award for being the first writer in her genre to write sci-fi, like, are you kidding me? She, to me, yeah. is yeah. the black sci-fi. Yeah. And I'm, I'm being serious. Now, I haven't read all of her books. I just happen to read, have read Dawn. Yeah. And it's epic. It's very epic and it's, it's very um, detailed in, in the story. And I like her writing just for that reason, and which translates into a very good TV series. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm intrigued. Um, my intrigue kind of doubles yeah. because I'm a big sci-fi fan and you know I'm a Trekkie, uh, so I love to see good sci-fi, and this is this is definitely going to be one of those stories where she just does it. I haven't always been a sci-fi fan, but I'm starting to love it because I'm seeing uh, us included in the storytelling of yes. sci-fi shows and films, <laughs> and that makes me happy. Season two of Altered Carbon is out on Netflix. It just came out February 27th, and it's starring Anthony Mackie. Mr. Marvel, remember, Marvel movies. And so what people may not know is season one was not Anthony Mackie. So the decision no. to bring him into season two, I, I would be interested in, in finding out why that is. I don't know if, it, if the original Takashi Kovacs died in season one, maybe not. I'm not sure. But I'm interested in... in <clears throat> I actually looked that up and uh, I couldn't find anything and maybe I was shallow in my, my look up. But um, it, it, it definitely is a difference between Mr. Mackey and, and, his, and his prior uh, prior character lead. Yeah. I think um, Anthony Mackey is going to bring to this movie what he brings to that Marvel movie. And I didn't think anybody mm. understood that until they saw the Marvel movies and the subsequent Marvel movies with him in it. Um, um, I remember uh, Anthony Mackie playing Tech from Crossover. I don't think you even remember that. I don't even know what Tech That was is. a basketball movie okay. that I saw Anthony Mackie in, and I couldn't, I was like, nah. But okay. then I saw, you know, other things that he's done, and I thought to myself, you know, this guy's on a grind. He can hold his own. He can hold his own. I mean, he, he's the type of cat that's been grinding it out, yeah. Yeah. and it's now paying off. And I, I dig it. I really dig it. And so now he's being considered for these roles that traditionally weren't mm -hmm. for him, but now he's making it his own. And in, in, in Altered Carbon, he plays this, like, dope bounty hunter looking for uh, his partner, and it's just a lot of excitement. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of movement. I'm digging it because, again, I'm a sci-fi dude, yeah. but also this content is... is is believable and it's cool you know it's not like one of those nerdy sort of sci-fis there's there is an element of cool yeah, to it i get cool. that and the whole concept of the transference of consciousness from body to body i am fascinated by that and the fact that you can choose yeah. what you look like right female male oh, should, whatever should we all be so lucky life mm. would be completely different if we all had that choice 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, get, I dig that. Right? I dig that. So then that's what I like about this. Because, you know, again, it's that alternate reality type of vibe where you're like, oh, okay, I can, I can see that or not. Um, and in addition to Anthony Mackie, uh, um, Angela from Power yes. is playing. Layla, uh, and, Layla Lawrence? Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, Simone, Missick Simone Missick from Luke Cage. Luke Cage. And uh, Renee Cage. Elise Goldsberry, who played in, what, The Good Wife? The Good Wife. And she played Henrietta Lacks in the HBO movie. Um, so they play kick-ass black women who are bounty hunters. Latinas, too. Right. Latinas. and Right. <laughs> right, so everyone's represented in this, oh, yeah. and I love oh, yeah. that. I love that. There's, I it, there's yeah. a piece of everyone in this, um, but I it, it makes me love sci-fi a whole lot more. Again, just because we're represented in it, um, now I'm interested in sci-fi. Yeah, in a way that I really wasn't before. Well, because the thing about it is, it's not relatable if you you don't see yourself in it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember mean, looking at Star Trek as a kid, thinking, you know, the black guy goes up with Spock and, and Captain Kirk. You already know what's going to happen. You know what it is from jump. <laughs> from jump. Unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to see us go into that, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's important. I think it's very, very good to have that, that, that black presence. Speaking of black presence, waking up white, uh, I found this trailer troubling, but at the same time, I understood where Jeffrey was coming from. Okay. Um, as African Americans, we have a problem with people validating or even ourselves validating our story. And I think his approach to validating our story is very, very, very ambitious, right? Okay. At the same time, I think it's a little, dare I say. Say it. Why are you going to do that? Say it. Why are you going to do that? You're going to make Just me say it. it. You're going to make me say I'll, it. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's, it's, it's a little tomfoolery. Okay. It's a little tomfoolery. I mean, I think. I think character-wise, he could have been better at picking mm -hmm. both white and black characters. I think um, the script is great, but I think it's delivered wrong. We talked about delivery. Yes. We know delivery, about. delivery is everything. Delivery is everything. And at the same time, um, I can't help but admire his vision and why he's doing it. I dig why he's doing it. I mean, how do you feel we are represented historically with our our presence in society like nobody really takes credence to what we say because they, it's always like oh you're defensive and it's like no it's not defensive I'm just trying to show you my perspective and I think he does a good job of saying it but I don't think he's showing it I have yet to see a movie that accurately represents us in the right light, right? It, it's been very comedic thus far with white chicks and movies of that same right. uh, nature. Yeah, I feel so and right. so before I watched the trailer um, for Waking Up White, which is about, you know, a family that um, wakes, wakes up white, right? And for 30 days, they are white. And after 30 days, they have to figure out, all right, are we gonna stay in the skin that we're in or are we going to go back to our black roots? So it's an intriguing, premise but then i watched the trailer and i felt a little disappointed in the delivery i'll keep it real you ain't like you said i was beyond disappointed. <laughs> okay that's what i was like yo you ain't, you ain't really saying i will match your tomfoolery 100 percent right. i i thought that it it didn't do a really good job conveying um the seriousness of it and not that it has to be the super dra dramatic series but they're, they're serious issues. I mean, his whole point of doing this was the question um, of, you know, if, if I were white, would this have happened? Would I have been stopped by the police? Would I have been shot? You know, that, that really important question that <laughs> everyone literally asks every time something happens. And I live, and right? you live. Exactly. So I, th I, I was expecting it to just kind of touch on, I don't know, just have seriousness to it. And based on the, tr the trailer, which is just the pilot, I don't think they've even done the, done the rest of the episodes. Three um, episodes, yeah. Yeah, so I, the verdict is out on it for me. I get the whole age-old question of, is the grass greener on the other side? I get it. I mean, I will be honest and say, there are times where I've been like, well, what would life be like for Ellen if she was white? Like, what, what would that look like? Like, the question has been asked. I can't be the only person. Nah, I don't think you are, but I think at the same time, I mean, I've lived it. I, I went from city life to suburban life, being the only black kid in the class, and I can tell you unequivocally that, yes, you do have that thought, 
But you realize, and this is where I think he's coming from, that it's not so different. It's just different sides mm. of the same coin. And the reason why I say that is this. Yes, we have you know, the, the, the problems with society's view of us and being stopped by police and, and all this other jazz um, in terms of prejudice and what have you, but they have to live with that guilt. And the, and the thing about it is how do you live with that guilt and be blamed for it, but you can't even apologize because it's not in their mind, it's not their fault. Are we assuming though that they have guilt? <laughs> well, because here's the thing, they, they do have a certain amount of guilt. Sure. They do have a certain amount of guilt because they like, you know, I'm gonna say hi to this person, but are they really yeah. sincere about it? Uh, eh, uh, eh. Okay, so with that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> we're gonna... she just goes straight in, just deep dive. We're gonna end this with our um, review section, which today is all about cherish the day. So this Don't is Ava DuVernay, right? Ava DuVernay's Cherish the Day on, um, is it the OWN Network? OWN Network, yes. OWN Network, that's right. And so Oprah. this is specific to episode four and five of Cherish the Day. Yes, and Gently and Evan decide, or they sort of come to mind, sort of, in it's, a weird way, yeah. um, to go up marriage, their future. Uh, and, it's, and it's interesting because in the social economical sense, you would think that African Americans can still relate to each other, right? Um, he comes from an Ivy League background, an upper middle class black family. She comes from a broken, uh, broken family, you know, no, no real mother, her father died, and she's living with her uncle, um, slash father and, and uncles. And she still has this complex and this really complicated, rolled up into all these emotions of, un, what, of not being able to trust mm -hmm. not only her own emotions, but just anybody else's besides her inner circle. Yeah. And she doesn't know how to deal with that because it's, it's foreign, right? It's foreign, it's scary, it's, it's intense. And I think we talked about uh, how intensely he looks at her. Mm. It's scary, but at the same time, it's like, damn. I want that. I want that. But at the same time, it's a lovely thing. It's, it's a picture-perfect black love. And so you touched on it. My biggest takeaway was the idea that a man who loves wholeheartedly and mm -hmm. gives his everything, and you can practically touch his love, that's how thick it is. That's scary to a woman, right? Because we're not used to it, right? And so the idea that something can be damn near perfect is terrifying to the point where I will push it away. I love how Ava touched on that, and I walked away thinking like, okay, all right, maybe I can just kind of soften <laughs> my resolve a little bit moving forward. Like, I, I took that, and I'm able to now apply that moving forward in terms of, it's not, <laughs> it's not a far-fetched idea to be loved wholeheartedly for who you are. Like, it's, it, it's trustworthy, it's real, and I love that. Right, and you definitely need to have um, an open mind and open yeah. heart for that because there, there's a lot of mistrust I think within regards to um, the African-American opposing sides Af African-American women and African-American men I think we, we most certainly have grown to mistrust each other a little bit in terms of our emotions mm -hmm. um, nobody mm -hmm. wants to be hurt yeah. and nobody wants to be played so to speak but I think that's where she's coming from. She doesn't want to be played. She doesn't want to be disrespected, but she also doesn't want to be devalued. Yeah. And I think that's where she's coming from. And I think Evan made a great effort, especially in that fifth episode, of valuing her. You know, he says, you know, what he really means, and she got it. And that's, 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 that's not easy. It's not. And I love that episode five touched on colorism to the nth degree. Yes. I mean, the, 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 yes. you know, the yes. positioning between yes. Evan's mother and Gently in that bridal scene room, that bridal scene was everything to me. Like, I feel like her, his mother finally came to the realization like, oh wow, yeah, we are two very different people, but I've been judging you and discriminating against you for who you are and maybe for you know the darker shade of your skin tone and for for your socioeconomic background and i loved the you know for lack of a better word the reckoning of her thinking like wait what am i doing why am i doing this this doesn't make any sense and we we do it within the black construct like we, 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 we do. do it every day we do. and it's sad 
And I like that they showed that for what it was, because I walked away from that feeling like, wow, okay, that was beautifully done. Yeah, we broke out of the matrix in that. Yes. We broke out of the yes. matrix. And I think not only that, just to capstone on, on what you said, that it's the colorism thing within our own uh, sec section of, of society, but also the fact that she understood that she loved her son. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's more important. She realized that, you know what, she wasn't doing this for the money. She said, you know, she was talking about getting an fancy dress and she stopped, she stopped her, oh, the dress is paid for. And she's like, no, that's, that's not what I want. And, and, and at that point, to your fact, the mother understood that right then and there. It Immediately. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't about money. Yeah. It wasn't about right. who he was or what he had. It was about him. And that made her more comfortable and more apologetic because she realized that 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 gently really loved him. I appreciate that quick turnaround of emotion on the mother's part. Oh, absolutely. I think that's a great reckoning. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, we're fans of Cherish today. I can't wait to keep watching wait to and see seeing what, where it yeah. goes. The next episode is definitely something to look forward to. Yeah. I'm certainly going to be watching it. And you can call me and we can chop I, it up. I will, because <laughs> I wanted to. To find out more about Black Film News, exclusives and reviews, check out blackfilm.com. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.